Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Cobb of Z Health Performance. Today we're continuing on our discussion of working on tennis elbow issues. If you're new to Z Health, as I usually say, uh, we're a brain-based education company specializing in working with doctors, therapists, and movement coaches from around the world. So if you find this interesting, subscribe to the channel and check out our free resources. All right, last time we talked a lot about working with tennis elbow and the brain. We discussed the idea of using a metronome. If you have not watched that video, go back and check it out. It's very important that you get that basic information. Today, what I wanna focus on is tissue mobility and joint mobility. And these are things that you can do on your own. So remember that the first thing that we said is that we need to do first a test. So I want you to go ahead and if you're experiencing tennis elbow, do something that is generally irritating to you. So that's opening a door, picking up a cup of coffee, making a tight fist, and grade yourself on the amount of pain that you're feeling scale of one to 10. We're gonna keep revisiting that as we move forward. The first thing that I wanna talk about is skin mobility. Many people that are experiencing tennis elbow will have minor restrictions in uh, peripheral nerves. Uh, and those peripheral nerves will often be moving outward toward the surface of the skin. Usually whenever we have pain, we like to dig around, like we're trying to work on the muscles and that's fine but sometimes we need to do the reverse and we need to decompress. So let's imagine that you're having pain in your left elbow or I'm having pain in my left elbow and I'm having pain as I make a fist. So the first thing I would do is test that. Let's say that's a, th a five out of 10 pain. I'm now going to begin working through the skin on the back of my arm. So if my palm's facing down, I'm gonna be working toward where I feel the pain. In order to do this though, I need to loosen up my fist and I'm simply going to go in and I'm gonna pinch the skin and I'm gonna try and pull it away from the underlying tissue. What will normally happen if you have tennis elbow is that somewhere along this line, I'm working up toward my elbow on a diagonal. As you're working through there and lifting the skin, you're probably gonna find a spot that's quite sore. If you find that spot and it's quite sore, I want you to secure it, lift it away from the underlying tissue and then try making the fist again. In many cases, you will find that the pain is either significantly diminished or gone. If that's the case, we wanna make sure that we're utilizing this type of stimulus or this type of work while we're doing other exercises. So if you go back to the last video when we were talking about doing a little band exercise, you may need to have a partner or someone help you with that, but as you were doing the band exercise, they would actually be decompressing the skin. If you don't have someone to work with, you can also utilize tools. We would love to use cupping instruments, like uh, you can get silicon cups or traditional suction cups using uh, air. Uh, they're very cheap and they're great tools for working on skin decompression. So again, we're gonna start palm down, pinching the skin, starting at the wrist or even in the hand, working our way up. And again, what are we looking for? We're looking for areas that are exquisitely tender as we lift them away from the underlying tissue. If we find those, we're then going to hold them as we do other exercises. In a pinch, if you, <laughs> no pun intended, if you don't have anyone to help you, you can just do a basic gripping exercise, grab a washcloth, roll it up so that it's nice and thick, and you'll be doing a squeeze using your metronome to a count of three. So three squeeze, three relaxation, while you're holding the area that was most tender and decompressing it. Uh, a lot of people, when they start working like this, get an immediate reduction in pain. So this is a great first mobilization to work on. Remember, we're not going after muscles or joints, we're going after the skin. If you do not find some success with that, the next thing that we wanna do is we're gonna work on the joints. And for this, I'm gonna demonstrate it in a chair. You can also do this against a wall. The wall is often more comfortable for people because you have to use some body weight. Uh, if you're gonna do it against the wall, you need two towels, one for your elbow, um, and then one for your grip exercise. So I'm gonna just show this to you without the towel for the wall because I'm gonna be using my own knee. So I'm gonna be sitting here Again, imagining that I need to work on my left elbow. I'm gonna keep my little grip uh, washcloth in my hand. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lean forward and I want to get some pressure above the point of my elbow. So if I bend my elbow, I wanna be above that. And I'm gonna be using pressure from my knee, all right? Now my palm is facing down, so I'm here. My other hand is now going to come in below the point of the elbow. So if this is the point of my elbow here, I wanna be below that. Now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be pressing in with my knee above the elbow and pressing out with my hand directly across 
with my opposite or with my hand. So as I do that, I'm going to be getting a little bit of joint mobilization. So what I want you to do is do about three reps and then hold that and then squeeze the towel. What you may find is that with that pressure, your squeeze becomes pain free. If that is the case, then this is going to become one of your regular exercises. We would then set the metronome and we would continue to do our three second squeeze, three second release while we were holding the pressure. The other thing I want to point out here is that sometimes pushing directly across provides you a little relief, but not a lot. If you get a little relief, but not a significant amount with a squeeze, I then want you to rotate your thumb down so that we're now pressing across and up on a diagonal. And then you're going to test that and you can also go the opposite direction so that we're going down on a diagonal. It's highly likely that one of those three directions will provide you the most relief. So we're building your own menu, right? We're figuring out the things that work well for you. If you find that, let's say an upward diagonal gives you the most relief, you would again then hold that using the pressure of your leg or the wall in your hand while you're using the metronome doing your squeezing exercise. Aim for three sets of 10 each exercise during your rest period keep testing and retesting because you may find that after one set you feel great after two sets the pain starts to come back up so once again you're able to grade this based off your personal response to the exercise which is a hallmark of how we approach things from a brain-based perspective i love this particular exercise approach these are very powerful so give it a shot and let us know what you think